This is my 2006 Ford 10 and a half inch Sterling rear. It needs a locker. This is a 2012 Ford 10 and a half inch Sterling rear. It has the factory electric locker. I think you can see where this is going. This locker, this axle. These electric lockers were a factory option on the 2011 and newer Ford Super Duties with the Sterling rear. So this is a single rear wheel only, not the dually. You can obviously identify it by the big green plug that goes into the side of the housing. If that green plug is not there, then you can see this is the little bulkhead that brings the wiring through the housing and into the locker. You can see that release is right there. You need a screwdriver to push that down and then it should just pull straight back. There you go. Watch out for that plug there too. You don't want to get that thing pinched. There we go. All right, pretty much the same process over here. Pop out this carrier and we'll get the new one in. With the old carrier out, you can see we've got a tone ring for the ABS system that is sitting behind the ring gear. That basically works by spinning inside the housing and that magnetic pickup there, which is your wheel speed sensor, counts the pulses of how many teeth come by it. And the computer uses that to figure out how fast the carrier is spinning and therefore be able to tell if all of a sudden the wheels stop. Now, as you can see, we do not have a tone ring on this locker. These newer axles actually handle all the ABS stuff inside of the brake rotor on the back of the wheel hub. Each wheel hub has its own tone ring and wheel speed sensor so the computer can read each wheel individually. The Dakota I'm swapping these axles into only has a single wheel speed sensor for the rear axle, so I'm gonna be using the older style. Therefore, I need to get this tone ring onto this locker. Out of laziness, I tap the tone ring off without removing the ring gear, but as you can see, there's an alignment lug that keys into the carrier, so what you should do is drop the ring gear and then tap the tone ring off the other direction to minimize the risk of damage. All right, we got our locker, got our tone ring, but the locker has no relief for this lug here. So we're gonna have to grind that off. Yahtzee. All right, so we got everything cleaned up. Now we've got the ring kind of just tapped on to where it's holding itself. And we'll uh, tighten these bolts down and hopefully that'll suck everything up and press that ring in where it's supposed to be. I'm just gonna hit it with the impact, call it done. When I do the gears, then is when I'll actually torque all these bolts down to spec and lock tight them and all that. All right, our locker with the tone ring is now in the axle I want it in. And we've got a little issue with that plug. We've got to figure out where that thing is going to go. My original hope was to reuse this guy. But I can't really see a place where that makes sense. So instead, we're basically just going to have to put a hole up here in the casting and run wires into kind of this corner right here. I'm actually gonna go through the top of the housing and use one of these guys. These are wire, what do they call them? Cable glands is what they call them. It's IP68, so it's waterproof. And this is the PG7 size. First step is to figure out where we wanna put our little cable gland. These are technically actually to mount in sheet metal panels, but this is obviously way thicker than a sheet metal panel. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna tap it I believe that's an M12 by one and a half thread on that one. So I'm gonna verify that and then drill and tap for this cable gland. All right, well, it turns out that is a half inch 20 thread on that thing. That's mighty friendly of them. I don't know if that's a standard deal for these. Even if it's not, it's close enough for me. So get to drilling and tapping. And for those of you following along at home, 
I put that hole at an inch and five eighths back and one inch down from that piece of the casting right there from that line. And if you're cringing and about to type a comment to me saying, oh my God, you're drilling next to bearings, it's gonna ruin them. The gears have to be changed out anyway. So these bearings are gonna get changed out. This whole thing's coming back out again anyway. Once this is out, I'll clean up all the shavings and everybody can just chill. All right, that feels a little loose in those threads. It's probably an M12 by 1.25 if I had to guess now that I'm looking at it, but I don't have that tap and the half 20 worked fine. So good enough for me. All right, with that cable gland installed, now we wanna run our wires through that and then hook them up to the wiring on the locker. Leave enough slack. You don't want those wires getting tugged on when this locker actuates back and forth. Now to connect my new wires to the existing wires, I'm gonna be using these solder seal connectors. I've never used them before, but basically it's heat shrink tubing. The little red band that you see is adhesive that glues itself to the insulation. And then in the center, it has some low temperature solder that when you hit it with the heat gun and shrink all this stuff together, that'll actually wet and solder the two wires together for a good connection. In theory, I've never used these things before. So if something ends up going terribly wrong, I'll let you guys know. Now with our connections made and our wire lengths figured out, we can pull those wires back through and get some heat shrink on them to keep them protected inside of the differential. I'm choosing to use these male spade terminals for my connection on the outside of the differential, mainly because they actually fit through that cable gland. That means that if I ever have to remove the locker, these will just fit back through the cable gland and I can pull the locker out like normal. The only thing is I made sure to stagger the lengths so that the two spade terminals are not right up next to each other. That way it makes it a lot easier to pull them through the cable gland as you'll see here in a second. All right, there you have it. Let's give her a test. Oh yeah. That's a locker. Just to prove a point, let's switch those and make sure that there's nothing polarized about this thing. Now the switch is on the purple wire. Still hooked up to our battery, same polarity there. And it's go time. That is not polarized. As long as it's got 12 volts going through it, it's actuating. This carrier bolts into all of the Sterlings, all the way back to 1985. So even if you got one of the older axles, this will work for you. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.